Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you can see, I am in a new space. This is my brand new apartment. There is literally nothing in here. So let's do an apartment tour. This whole vlog is gonna be my moving vlog. So I'm gonna try to answer some questions, show you guys what I have going on. I'll show you what I buy and all the things. I am gonna be vlogging this also on TikTok. So make sure you're following me on TikTok. If there's something in this vlog that doesn't get answered, it probably got answered on there. So with that, let's do a quick little mini empty apartment tour. Okay, so this is what you see when you walk in. Um, over here is like bathroom, bedroom area. This, I hate this, obviously, but I can't complain about having AC in Los Angeles, but I need to figure out what I'm gonna do to cover that. But this is like the living space area. I did get a couch already. I will show you guys what it is when it gets here. And then TV is gonna go over there. Entryway stuff is gonna go over here. It looks a lot smaller on camera than how it actually is. So I'm excited to put some stuff in here so you'll see like the actual size. Anyways, over here, already filmed a TikTok. There's my tripod per usual. We have like the living room, dining area, what's gonna end up being my office section. So I think I'm gonna put my desk over here. Eventually a dining table will go over here, but I can only buy so many things. So it's gonna be my office for now. And then over here we have my favorite part. Well, I don't know if this is my favorite part. I have a lot of favorite parts, but the kitchen. I'm so excited about this kitchen. I'm so excited to make videos in here and to cook in here and to get stuff to put in here. That's what I'm gonna do later today. Um, but basically we have all these cabinets that there's no way I'm gonna fill them. Up here, you know, pretty basic. My favorite thing though is the soft closing cabinets. Sink, window over the sink, big win. Combo washer dryer, which I've never had before, but again, not gonna complain because washer dryer and unit is a non-negotiable for me. So hopefully this works. I've never used something like that before. Over here, we've got stove, microwave. This is an upgrade because in my current apartment that I'm moving out of, I don't have a microwave. So I'm psyched about this. Tons and tons of storage. And there's also space up there. I don't know if I'll put anything up there, but maybe all the storage down here. Love the counters, love the counters. And then two big wins, one giant fridge. I love how they gave me this egg thing. I'm vegan, so I don't eat eggs, but um, tons of space in there. And then the big win, it's the little things, ice maker. There's no ice in there right now, but there will be. So I'm really excited about that. Then there's this like chandelier thing. I hate this. I don't know what I'll do about that, but that's gonna be like, a long-term future problem. Um, walking over here, we've got some storage. So I'm excited about that. That was something in my current apartment that we like don't have at all is storage. So there's storage up there, storage down here, bathroom, pretty basic, but I've got a window in the bathroom, which I'm excited about. Me in the mirror, hello. And then my bedroom, which Let's all take a moment of silence for these ceilings and for that big ass window, because I am so excited to have all this space. This room, you can probably hear the echo, is like so much bigger than my current room. That's pretty much the whole space. I am so excited to finally be in here and to like get this all set up. I mean, it's gonna be kind of a work in progress for a while. It'll take me a few months to get fully settled. But today, what I am gonna do is I actually have um, some stuff in my car. I have a garage here, which I'm excited about. I have some stuff in my car that I need to go bring up here. Then I'm gonna go to Home Goods and probably Target and get some stuff. And then I have a friend who's gonna help me drive some more stuff over here later. And then tomorrow I have help with moving all of my furniture and whatever. So hopefully by the end of tomorrow, I'll be feeling a little more settled, but basically, I'm taking like today and tomorrow, not fully off work, but like mostly off work in order to get settled and through the weekend and stuff. And the goal is that by next Monday, I'm gonna be fully back in it. So yeah, that's the empty apartment tour. I'm so excited to take you guys along on this and I'll catch you in a bit.
So I bought a lot of things and I went to Home Goods, like I said, and Target. I spent $107 at Home Goods and $650 at Target. So let's go through everything. First, we'll start with Home Goods. So really, these are all just like essential things that I needed. I got some bowls, a step stool. You always need something like that. A cookie sheet. These things, cups, a cutting board. My dad is actually mailing me a cutting board because he makes them. Um, he's a carpenter and he's really talented, so I will show you guys that when I actually get it. These spoon things, chip clips, a sponge holder and a strainer. This for the fridge to organize my seltzers and any like cans and stuff that I put in there. And then some dish towels. And then I had two other home goods bags. These are glass. So first is this, and this is for putting those utensils and I'll put it on the counter. Then I got these like bowl plates. So I'm obsessed with bowl plates and I knew that I was gonna need to buy these separate and these were only $10. And yeah, that was everything for home goods. Now let's get into Target. So I got some cleaning stuff. I also got some cleaning stuff at Costco, but I'm gonna need to go do an entirely separate Costco run once I figure out what else I need. So I got some cleaning supplies and then I got this lamp. So something about my apartment is there's no overhead lighting except for in the kitchen. So I already have a lamp, but I know I'm gonna need to buy some lamps. And this one was reasonable and I thought it was cute and small. Lamps are so big. I don't need like giant lamps. Uh, I got some silverware. I got two of these. So these were the Target room essentials. I decided I'm not gonna like splurge on silverware and dishware. Um, I just think it's all kind of the same, so. I pick and choose, so I got the basics of that kind of stuff. Another silverware. I got a Brita because you need one of these. Brita. Brita's are expensive. This was forty dollars. And then getting into some of the more fun stuff. I got these glasses, which I'm really excited about. These are like those thick blue glasses, which I personally love the style of those. I got this toaster. This was $15, basic toaster. Again, I don't need to splurge on a toaster. Knives, so I got the Cuisinart stainless steel knives. I liked these because they were white and I feel like they fit the aesthetic of my apartment since we're gonna be sitting on the counter. These were like $115, which for knives, I feel like it's pretty good. They're definitely not top of the line knives, but I don't eat meat, so I'm only chopping vegetables and stuff. So I didn't need to buy like super, super fancy knives, but we got those. I got this drawer organizer. I was expecting them to have these at Home Goods, and they like really didn't have them. And then I got this stainless steel rack for dishes. These are the best dish racks because you can fold them away and they don't leave space on your counter. And then I also got these dishes, which I need to go run through the dishwasher. The final things I got, I can't carry. So I got this Cuisinart stainless steel pan set. So this was like $220, I think. If there was one thing that I was gonna spend some money on, it's pans. I want everything to match. I wanted stainless steel. And I didn't wanna get like the super, super expensive ones. So I think these will be great. Um, and it's a 14 piece set. So I feel like I got a lot for what I paid. And then I got a trash can, which why are trash cans so expensive? So yeah, pretty basic. So this is the aftermath of all of that. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I feel like I was really looking forward to shopping. And so I'm glad I got kind of like the bulk stuff out of the way. And now I'm gonna run the dishwasher and unpack all of this and put it all away, take it out to the garbage. And then I gotta go back to my apartment to get some more stuff. Hello, it's been a little bit since I've done a check-in. 
Yesterday was absolutely chaotic. Yesterday was the day that I moved all of my furniture in here and so I just didn't have the energy to vlog. I think that I did not sit down for probably 12 hours, which is absolutely insane. And so today I'm exhausted. I did do some other errands. I got a couch. I'll show you guys what everything looks like in a minute, but I went to Home Goods. I went to the Home Goods in Manhattan Beach, so it was a nice Home Goods. And there was also a uh, CB2 outlet there that I looked around in. There was nothing that I ended up getting, but it was good to look. And then I went to Target, got a Swiffer, which was all I needed. I got some copies of my keys, and now I'm gonna chill. But before I do that, I'm gonna do a little bit of a haul here. So this is what I got from Home Goods, um, and I'm gonna just go through it. I spent $85. And I actually have the receipts this time, so mm, do I? I thought I did. It has prices on it. So I got these bins for organizing my drawers. These were $6.99 for five. So these are gonna go like in my kitchen drawers. And then I got some oven mitts, $6.99. Another little drawer organizer. This is like a utility drawer organizer. This was $4.99 paper towel holder, essential, can opener, essential. These cups, which were not essential, but they're so cute, so I'm gonna open them and show you. I'm obsessed. I've always wanted little cups like this. Like these are so cute and fun to drink out of if you're making like a cocktail or a mocktail or whatever. So I already have a glass set, but I really liked these, so I got some more. Peelers, also essential. And then I got this bin. Um, because, and I'll show you guys this. The way that I'm all set up here, this is my desk. Let me just give you the tour. And I also don't have good lighting, so I need to get some lamps. But basically, you walk in, I think, I don't know yet where I wanna put the couch. It's either gonna go here and the TV's gonna go here, or the couch is gonna go over here and the TV's gonna go here. It just depends on what TV stand I get. The coffee table is gonna go eventually. The couch is from Living Spaces. It's the Utopia 96 inch cloud couch dupe. Um, I'm also gonna get the ottoman that matches it. So TBD, where I end up putting everything. This entryway table has my shoes and stuff in it. And I got this in my last apartment. So I just took it with me over here. This bookshelf from my last apartment. This is all my Pilates stuff. I need to make it look better. This wheelie thing is eventually gonna go, but for now it's gonna work. My desk is gonna get moved over a little bit and I am going to get a table and chairs for over there. But the way that the router is like hooked up in this apartment is that it has to go here where my desk is gonna go. So I got this little bin to put it in so that I can hide it a little bit and that it's not like on the floor. And then I can hide all of the cords. And since it's this mesh, I can loop the cords through it, if that makes sense. And so it'll just look better. Over here is the dining area. And then over here is the kitchen. And I was having a little snack here. The beauty of living alone is that I can just leave this out when I want to. So yeah, that is the living space tour. Let me take you into the bedroom quickly. Over here is the bathroom. And then this is my room, which doesn't have any overhead lights, but it does have these amazing ceilings. So I'm super psyched about that. But yeah, my bedroom is gonna be like the last place that I focus on just because I have a bed. I'm gonna get two nightstands, probably like kind of big nightstands. And then I have this dresser, which I like, but like it's a little bulky for this space. But again, I'm, it's not an urgent thing. And then I'm gonna get some sort of bench or chair situation to go over here. So that's the space. I'm super excited and yeah. That's the update. I'm gonna answer some questions probably tomorrow. Okay, so I just did a Whole Foods and a Costco run and this was like a big stock up for my apartment. I haven't done this yet, so let's go through everything that I got. So first, this is from Costco. I got a big bag of edamame. This is so good for snacks. And now that I have my own freezer, I'm planning space for it. I got peanut butter because I eat this every day. The thing about Costco is that when you're only shopping for one person, like there's only so many things you can actually get, but for staple items like this and like pantry items, it's really great if you have the storage for it. So that was one bag. 
Then let me see if I can find the other Costco stuff. I also got these avocados at Costco. This bread, which I went with my old roommate. So we got this bread, there were two and split it. So we each took one. Brazil nuts, which are supposedly good for hormone health if you eat one per day. And then Grillo's pickles because these are so good. So I have to get them. Other things from Costco. I got this big thing of canned beans. So Costco is another, like, like I said, staples. I get a lot of my staple stuff from Costco. They only had black beans this time, but usually I would get like chickpea, chickpeas, pinto beans, all the beans and just buy them in bulk. I got organic diced tomatoes. So this is all pantry stuff. I got this big thing of soy milk because I've been making lattes lately and soy milk and like milks in general, non-dairy milks have gotten really expensive. So that's 12 containers and it was like $14. I got a thing of laundry detergent. I got this cute little throw blanket from, or from Costco, but this was only 10 bucks. So this is perfect for my couch. And then I got this big thing of paper towels, which what is Costco good for? If nothing else, it's for paper towels and toilet paper. I already have toilet paper though. So that was Costco. Now Whole Foods, I had to get like miscellaneous things. I'm still gonna need to go back to Whole Foods, but I got what I knew that I needed. I got taco seasoning, cause I'm gonna make chili. Pumpkin seeds for my oatmeal. Again, this is like a hormone thing. Tofu. I wanted to buy tofu in bulk at Costco, but they only had firm and I like my tofu extra firm. Honey mustard or Dijon mustard because I'm gonna make this like mustardy dressing for a recipe this week. Sweet potatoes and then maple syrup. This is also for recipes for the dressing. So I'm gonna, I got kale at the farmer's market and I'm gonna do like a roasted sweet potato, chickpea, honey mustard, kale salad with either pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds. And then this is the last bag. Oh yeah, this is the last bag. I got bananas, tahini also for that dressing. I got two zucchinis cause I already have some zucchini in the fridge. I got two cucumbers for the salad. I got, and then I got a bunch of beans. So I got baked beans. This is for chili. Garbanzo beans, a couple cans of those. Yeah, I got four cans of garbanzo beans, a couple cans of kidney beans, and then a couple cans of these great northern beans. And that's the haul. So basically this is enough groceries to stock me up for a little bit. I'm gonna have to go back and get like some fresh stuff. Um, but for the most part, I don't think I'm gonna need to do like a big grocery haul until after I go to Big Sky, which is next weekend, not this upcoming weekend, the following weekend, it's Sunday now. So yeah, that's the haul. To wrap up this vlog, I'm gonna run through a Q&A to answer a couple of quick questions that you guys have had for me about the move. I did post a Q box on my Instagram stories about a week ago at this point, where I asked you guys to ask me a few questions. So I'll go into some of those in more detail, likely in a podcast episode, but I have gotten a handful of the same questions over and over. The most frequently asked question, well, two, one being, am I living by myself or do I have a roommate and I am living by myself? I think at this point in the vlog, that's obvious. And two, how much am I paying? So I'm gonna answer this question twofold. One with the direct amount, which is $2,695. So $2,700 a month is my rent on this apartment, which I'm gonna disclaim, that's a lot of money. And I'm not saying it's not. For Los Angeles, a one bedroom apartment, that's the going rate if you wanna live A, in the area that I live in, and B, in a place that's like nice and updated like my current apartment. So yeah, it's expensive. But I think really the whole like rent thing is so individualized and so situational that I wouldn't use my situation as a comparison for like what you should do. And I wouldn't really look to too many other people. I think when it comes to rent on any apartment, there are so many things that come into play, okay? so. The location is a big one. So throughout LA, like, yes, could I have gotten a one bedroom apartment for less money? Absolutely. 
but I would have had to live in a different neighborhood, which I didn't want to move into a new neighborhood. I really like the neighborhood that I'm currently in. Um, this is the same neighborhood as my last apartment. So I would have had to look into other neighborhoods that are further from the beach or further from my friends or further from things that I want or are generally unsafe. The thing about LA is that depending on the neighborhood you're in, you could be in either a really great part of town or like a really terrible part of town. And it's literally street by street, neighborhood by neighborhood. So it's as a young woman living alone, there was only a few places that I would be comfortable living. Two, I needed to make sure my unit was on the second floor. So that eliminated 50% of the apartments that I could have chosen. I do not want to live on a first floor unit um, with a roommate alone, no matter what. I wanted to be on the second floor. Three, I needed to have and wanted to have, I guess it's not a need, updated appliances and I wanted to have laundry because in my last apartment I had those things and it's really hard to have like a nice apartment and then go and pay more money for less a less nice space. Like it doesn't really make any sense. So that was a big thing for me. Um, and then four, I wanted to have parking. So in my current unit now, in this new one that I'm in, I actually have garage parking, which I personally really like. In my last apartment, we just had covered parking behind the unit, but now with the garage parking, I just feel more safe and comfortable with my car. And also getting out of my car at night, I can close the garage door and walk directly into my buildings like gated area as opposed to before I would have to get out of my car and walk in the dark, you know, in an alley to get back to my door. So it's just overall safer. The other thing about my apartment that I really liked is that the entire building is gated. So nobody can come in here without a key or without being let in by somebody else that lives here where my last apartment was open air. So the only barrier to entry was the door, which I did never really felt unsafe, but for living by myself, these were all things that I wanted. And if you want those things, you have to pay for them. And so in all of my research of looking for apartments, I found that to have an apartment, a one bedroom apartment in my area that had in unit laundry, not shared laundry, and was updated and not disgusting, and also had parking, the going rate was $2,600. So I feel like I'm getting a really good deal for what I was looking for in the area that I wanted. But remember, that's all entirely relative to where you live, what the market is like, and what you're looking for. You know, if I was living in, you know, a different city, maybe I'd be paying less. If I was living in Boston, I'd for sure be paying at least $2,700 for a one bed. That's nice. It would be half the size and I wouldn't have parking. So that's how I justify it because if I wasn't living in LA, the only other city I would be living in is Boston and I wouldn't be saving any money. Granted, if I lived in Boston, I probably would have bought property there, but my mortgage would be the same and I don't really want to buy property just yet at this phase in my life. So anyways, that's my rent. That was my thought process behind it. I think when you think about making like living decisions, especially in your later 20s, I think it's different when you are in your early 20s. I think up until the age of 25, you should have a roommate unless you're married or you have an extenuating circumstance because... During that period of time, you know, it's a lot easier to have a roommate, take advantage of that time to save money. After 25, 26, if you're in a situation where you're not living with a significant other and you're just tired of the roommate thing, that's when I would start exploring living alone. I personally, this is a personal belief, so please don't take offense to it, think that if you can afford to live by yourself in your 20s, you should for a period of time because you learn a lot about who you are. You learn how to be only responsible for you and you just get really independent. And that's something that I see a lot of people struggle with is like they never take the time to be alone. And I think it's really important. But again, that's just my opinion. So anyways, that's what I pay in rent. That's how I like, I don't wanna say justify, but like that's why my rent is what it is. I can comfortably afford it. It is far less than 30% of my income. And I think that's another thing to keep in mind is like, sure, maybe to you, 2,700 feels like an outrageous amount of number uh, amount of money. But for me, it's beneath the recommendations for like an appropriate amount of your income to spend on rent. My alternative was living with a roommate in a situation that I really wasn't very happy in. Um, and I was just tired of that. Like I needed, I needed my own space. So that's that. The other common question was, why am I moving? So I just kind of alluded to this, but I was never, or I wasn't really actively looking. I was always passively looking because 
you know, I turned 27. I had been living in LA for a year and I'm like, okay, like I really like my roommate. We're really good friends, but I need more space. And I was doing my business and building my business and writing a book. And the only space in my apartment that I had for just me was my bedroom. And in my bedroom was, my bedroom was small. And in there was my bed, my nightstand, like all my stuff. And then in the little corner was my desk. And that's the only space that I had for working, for filming, for everything. So if you go back over the last year and a half and you look at 99% of my videos, I'm in the corner of my room. There's a white background behind me and it's very plain and boring. And just like that worked for moving to LA. I think moving to LA, I wanted to have a roommate because I wanted to be around someone else. I wanted to have somebody who could do things with me, who I could do things with to help me just learn and explore the city and make friends. Now being here for like almost two years, I have my friends. I know what I like to do. I know the area and I don't feel like I need that help um, or that like other person to rely on. And then on top of that, I just needed more space. You know, I'm building a business. I have big goals. I want to build a seven figure business. It's really hard to do that from the corner of your room. And I just felt like it was time. Um, beyond that, my roommate has a cat and I hate cats. And I didn't know what it was like to live with a cat until I lived with one. And it's not for me. So I also wanted to live in an environment that had no pets because I really, well, I love pets and I love other people's pets. I don't want one. I don't want it in my space. I want to have clean space. And I was just honestly, point blank, tired of, tired of the cat. Like it was just really annoying me. He was always all over my stuff, all over the counters. It's not a lifestyle I want. And it was making me very, very unhappy. And it was eroding my relationship with my roommate who is someone who I value and want to stay friends with. So it was really just time. Um, so that's why I was moving. And then I found this apartment, which as you've seen is really gorgeous and I'm really excited about it. And I liked the price. Um, I do feel like this apartment could have been priced much higher than what it is. So I felt like it was like all the stars aligned, right? I found this apartment, everything worked out and I was ready and it was time. Um, let me see what other questions. The other big question was, what do you recommend doing for saving up for moving? And this is a good question. My situation was unique, so I'll tell you what that is and then I'll give you my tips. Essentially, I set a bunch of money aside every year or like every month for my taxes and my taxes or the amount of money I had in that account was much higher than what I knew and know I'm going to owe. So I took a small chunk of money out of there to really fund my move. And that funded like my first month rent, my security deposit, my couch, all of my setup stuff. And I'm feeling good about that. I also had, I got my security deposit back on my other apartment. So that kind of helped even things out a little bit. I got a pretty big check from Rakuten. It was like $850, which is just cash back. So I used that as well and applied it to all of these costs. So that was how I funded this. I mean, I have the money, so I could have funded it no matter what, but I didn't want it to impact my like month to month budget, if that makes sense. So I really just crowdfunded some money from various sinking funds, various different places to help cushion this a little bit because moving is really expensive. You know, you think about first month rent, and then on top of that, you have to pay a security deposit. Depending where you live, you could have to pay a broker's fee. I didn't have to pay a broker's fee. Luckily, they don't do that in LA, but I had to pay, pay an application fee, but that was only like $25. And then I have never lived in my own space. So like, I don't have anything, you know? In my last apartment, my roommate furnished it. She had all the kitchen stuff. So like, I had to buy all of those things, which I've spent about $3,500 between my couch, which was two grand just about. I got it from Living Spaces. And then all the stuff for my kitchen. So pots, pans, knives, silverware, um, going to Costco, all the things to just get set up. That's a one-time cost though. So like I have those things, now I'm gonna coast for a little bit, live in the space before I buy anything else. In terms of saving up, my best tip is to create a sinking fund with a high yield savings account. I have a free high yield savings account in my, um, I'll have it linked in the description below. Create a high, or open a high yield savings account and create a sinking fund. And every month contribute money to that to use to fund your move. So a couple hundred dollars if you can afford it. And when you do move, you already have the money set aside to pay for everything. High yield savings accounts and sinking funds are like the best way to save for this kind of thing. So if you know that you could even potentially be moving, maybe you don't know for sure, start saving for it anyways. 
start slowly buying some things. So like, I wish that I had slowly over time accumulated some kitchen stuff, but I had nowhere to put it because that would have made this whole process like a little less painful, but slowly accumulate things. So if you know you're gonna be moving in six months, like maybe start buying some things for the kitchen or start setting money aside for that kind of stuff or create a list of all of the things that you're gonna need because that can just help you A, get organized, B, anticipate what things are gonna cost and C, just take the pressure off a little bit. With that, I am gonna wrap up this moving vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed. This was definitely a little bit of a different style video. If you have questions about the move, if you have anything you want me to talk about or anything you wanna see related to my apartment, related to the move, all those kinds of things, let me know. I am happy to do more videos on this, do a podcast on it, answer your questions. And yeah, I will catch you in the next one.